I'm going to show you how to solve not one, but two Sudoku finned swordfishes and why you need to care about the red and green cells. Click below. You want to give this puzzle a go. And with that, it's solving time. Let's start off by doing some simple Snyder notation. Look in block six. You got this two coming up here. Get this two coming across this way. Only two possibilities for a two, so we'll mark that. Anytime in a three by three block, you have two possibilities for a can it mark it. In case you solve one of these cells, you can solve the other one right away. And then with the threes, you'll see a three cutting across here. And for this three coming up, you can solve a three here. And you're going to get pretty excited, but hold on. You're not going to get much more progress in this puzzle. I'm going to show you this. All right, with these two threes, you can put Snyder threes in block six. Now you want to notice that these twos and fives line up. You know, the two and five lines up here, lines up going across here, and it lines up column seven. That's important to notice. And if you are new, welcome to Smart Hobbies. Subscribe, click the bell for notifications. If you want to turn your passing interest in Sudoku into a fun and enjoyable hobby. We're going to do a little bit more with the Snyder notation. Check out the seven cutting across row five. So there's only two possibilities for seven here. That makes them a pointing pair. So the sevens can't be in this spot or this spot or down there. And then this seven cutting across row seven and column eight, only two possibilities for seven here. It's another pointing pair. So the idea here with a pointing pair is that if you put a seven like in this spot, you'd have no place to put a seven in block nine. So we know it's a pointing pair. So with these sevens and this seven, you can have only two possibilities for seven in block three. And then if you notice over here with this seven, seven's gonna be in these three spots, but they're limited to rows two and three in block one. They're also limited, the sevens, to rows two and three in block three. And with this pointing pair of sevens, you only have two possibilities for seven here in block two, right? Because the seven's gonna be in one of these spots, like here and here, or one of these spots in here, in blocks one and three. The only place it can be in block two is up here in row one. And since you have this pointing pair here, these two spots, this is called a claiming pair. And it's gonna make sure that we can't put sevens in any of these spots down here. Okay, look at the eights. You got this eight coming down, column four. Two possibilities for an eight here. It's gonna be another pointing pair. Can't do much else. With that, and then the nines cut across right here and creates a pointing pair in block one. And that's about it. There are no hidden singles to solve at this point or any other Snyder notation. Each puzzle's got a story. This story starts with MBG Sangar, who sent me this puzzle after getting stuck on it. He found it online. What's really cool is this has the minimum number of Sudoku givens. It's only got 17 to start with. And this one's a little bit harder than some of the other ones I've been featuring. So I wanted to show you how to solve this. You can send me your puzzles through Discord, Instagram, Reddit, or any or email. Just check out the links below. I would love to help you out. At this point, when you get stuck, you need to now look for single candidate strategies. Remember I talked about these twos and fives? That's where we're going to look first. That's the most digits in the givens are the twos and fives. So where can the twos be in this puzzle? And you'll see, I'm going to mark them all right here. You'll notice it covers that green cell. And whoop, we'll do here. We'll do here. Do these spots and these spots. Okay. So we'll mark this in blue. And so what you may notice is that in... Disregard the red, that's not part of our deal. In row five, in row seven, and then here in row two, the twos in those rows are restricted to the same three columns, columns two, six, and nine, except for this extra little cell right there, all right? That's got a little fin. So if we didn't have this fin, then the twos would be limited in rows two, five, seven, the columns two, six, and nine. And that would be a Sudoku swordfish. But we have this fin here, 
we have what's called a finned swordfish. And what it does is it puts restrictions on this cell right here. With a finned swordfish, you can eliminate any of a candidate that's in the same column as the swordfish is and in the same block as the fin. And so what I'm talking about here, let's do a little marking here. What could this be? A two, three, four, five. Can't be a six, can't be a seven because of the pointing pair of sevens or an eight. And so this, if you put a two right here, here's what would happen. These cells couldn't be a two, this would have to be a two, right? And then the two would have to be right here. And you'd put a two right here. And then that would put a two right here. And then you look and go, where could a two be in block eight? Well, it can't be here anymore because of this two. It can't be here because of this two. And it can't be here because of that two. And with this two, you can't be in any of these spots. We would have no place to put a two. So we know that either the fin is true and that can't be a two. If it's not true, this is a swordfish. This can't be a two. So you can eliminate the two from that spot. And I just showed you why you can eliminate that two. So we want to eliminate the two from right there. And so what we can do now is I'm going to remove the colors. Actually, I'll keep the color for just a second. Is that this is not a two anymore. Then we have a pointing pair of twos right here in block three. They're limited to these two spots. So this can no longer be a two. And then these two cells would be a two. That's what we need to see by doing this swordfish. So we're going to remove all the blues and we'll remove all the oranges. And we'll get rid of our purple as well. You may be able to improve your Sudoku skills faster than you think. Click on the pinned comment to join the Smarty Party. And I will send you exclusive monthly puzzle packs and other exclusive content to give you more ways to solve hard Sudoku. And you want to solve hard Sudoku, right? Now let's look at the fives. Fives are almost in the same spots as the twos. We'll make these marks. You'll notice it also covers our green cell. Fives. These fives, fives here, and fives here. Okay. Now, let's put those in blue. And what you may see is very similar to what we just did. Row five, row seven. We can actually eliminate. Let me get rid of these fives because you have this five right here. I apologize for that. So look at row five, row seven, and row two. These cells that I just colored orange would make a swordfish of, two, of fives in rows two, five, and seven. They restrict the same columns, three, six, and nine. And it would be a swordfish except for this nice little fin right here. So this is our fin. But this is true. And this can't be a five. It's not true. We have a swordfish of fives. And every five on the column wouldn't be a five. So we know we can eliminate the five from right there for the same reason why we can eliminate the two earlier. And this is awesome, because now what does this do? This puts the fives in these two spots. And I've showed you this before. Whenever you have Snyder marks on top of each other, the twos and fives on top of each other, that is a hidden pair, because the two and five can only be in those two spots in this block. So no other candidates can be there. This is awesome. It would eliminate a five from this spot, and it's going to, guess what? Put fives right there. So now we have another hidden pair, two and a five. You have to find this thin swordfish to get to this point, but we're not done. And I'm going to tell you we have another band strategy, and then we're going to keep working with our pairs. We are just getting started, and the fun is just getting started in this puzzle. If you want to learn more about swordfishes, check out this tutorial. All right, let's remove the blue colors, let's remove the orange colors and the purple colors. Okay. We haven't solved our green or our red cell yet. I want to keep those colors up. What can we do? This is kind of cool. We just made a restriction here in column four. You don't think, well, that's not too much, Timberlake. Until you see this. Where can a two, four, and a five go in column four? You notice right here, it can't be in this cell. Right? One of them can be right there. Yep. But the two, four, and five are also in block five. So they fill up block one, block five. They can't be in these three cells. So the only three cells, the two, four, and five, can be are right there. One has to be there, 
Well, we must be it. This is a hidden triple. This is amazing stuff. I love how you can find this hidden triple here. So you got a four five here. You have a two five, right? Excuse me, a two four right there. I just need to type a little bit better. And we can put the fours there because they're limited in the block now that these two fell. And now we can make some more solving. If you want to learn more about hidden triples, check out this tutorial. What kind of solving can we do now? We just did two swordfishes and a hidden ripple. All right. I think we want to look at is we can actually solve a cell now. Where can the ones go in block two? With these two ones, this is only place left for a one. And then now with these two fours, we can solve for a four here in block two. And then we're, we're, can we solve for three? Yep. We sure can, because you have these two threes. We can solve for a three here, displacing that Snyder seven. Now we're starting to get some momentum here. And what's left here is a nine and a six, because you have the pointing pair of nines. This can't be a nine. That's got to be your six. That's got to be your nine. Okay, and then what do we have left over here to finish row one? We have an eight and a six. So I have my six right here, so this has got to be your six, and that's going to be your eight. So we can eliminate the eight from that cell and we can put a three seven here this would be a three four seven but you'll notice now the fours are limited to these two cells in block three all right making progress what else can we do let's look over here we can actually solve this cell now because we filled out all of these cells here what can this cell be well it can't be a one two three four five it can't be a six now and it can't be a seven or an eight. This cell has to be your nine. That is your naked single nine. Great. And then we can look here, and since we have this two, four, five hidden triple, this is actually a one, six, seven naked triple. All right, because there's only three cells remaining, it has to be a one, six, or a seven. And we could trim this down just a little bit, but what it does is it leaves us with just an eight, nine in block five. So that's gotta be an eight, nine, hidden pair and they also act as a pointing pair and what this is going to do is help us with some more solving with these two sixes we can solve for a six right here and then if you look down this column you got a one two three four five we need a six seven eight or nine well i have the six seven right here this has to be the eight or nine which leaves a six and seven to these two cells so we're making more restrictions here and i showed this in my previous solve of a 17 digit sudoku you gotta create more girth more robustness by using a lot of hidden and naked pairs that's how you start filling out the grid and now it's time to solve this red cell because this eight nine acts as a pointing pair as well what can this cell be well it can't be a one it can't be a two it can't be a three it could be a four but it can't be a five six seven and now it can't be eight or nine it has to be a four and i highlighted this cell because if you don't see this naked single right now it's kind of hard to make some more progress in the puzzle i wanted to help you out there and if you're finding value in what i'm showing you please consider buying me a coffee or just click on the super thanks in youtube i'd really appreciate it what this does for us is this allows us now to solve for the four right there and I'll get rid of that mark and I'll get rid of this mark. But we're not done, but we are making more progress. We just solved the green cell. And so I can move the color from the green cell as well. Let's look in block six. We're going to be able to solve now with this three seven. This can no longer be a three. So we can solve a three here, displacing the Snyder two. And then this is going to give us an eight nine naked pair right here. And this would be a one five naked pair but hey with this two now we can disambiguate the five two up here and allow us to solve the one five down there all right after that let's look here in block four we have these two fives and this five we can solve for a five right here and then you have this eight nine naked pair you have one six remaining i got my one right here this has to be the six that's got to be the one which allows us to disambiguate the naked trip we have a one six seven taken care of all right there 
Now let's look where a five can be in block seven. You have these two fives and this five, we can solve for a five right here. And now we're gonna be able to solve this for four, solve this for the two, solve this for the five, solve that for the two, right? I love cleaning up these digits. And with these two fives, this has to be a five right there. Okay, after doing all of that, let's look in block seven. You have these twos and this two, we can solve for a two here. And now with these twos and this two, we can solve for the two in block four. Nice. Can we do this with the ones? Yeah. Here's the ones. And this one, we can solve for one here. And now with these two ones, we can solve for one right there. And now the one can only go here in block eight. And then with this one, it can only go here in block nine. Okay. Can we finish column one now? We have a one, two, three, four, five, seven, nine. We need a six and an eight. Well, I got six right there. This has to be the eight. That has to be your six and then after column one let's look over here because of this eight now we got a nine and an eight right there we have a full house cut across row four so we know we can solve this for a nine now and then what's left here is a four seven okay can we do better than that i bet we can so we can look here we now have a one two four five six eight we need a three, seven, nine. Well, I got three and a seven right here. That's got to be the nine. And this is going to be a three, seven. Okay. And then what do we need here? It looks like we need a four and an eight. Well, I got my four here. So here's your four and here's your eight. All right. Looking good. And with this nine now, we can solve the eight, nine, and the eight right there. All right. We don't have a four yet in block seven or in row seven in block seven. Now we can disambiguate the seven four right there. All right, we're getting a lot of progress here. This seven means a seven has to be here in block one. It means this is a three and that's a seven. The three can only go here in block one now because of that three, which means this has to be an eight. Okay, with these two eights and this eight, little cross hatching is gonna give us an eight right there. A full house means I can solve this for a three, disambiguate in the seven, and this is gonna be a three in the corner nice job all right we've got the six there seven there it is time to celebrate because we can put a nine right there i'm going to pull it on over to block seven and our last digit is a six challenge yourself with another type of swordfish in this next video thank you mbg sankar for recommending this puzzle and i want to thank you so much for watching